Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and folks, we are broadcasting live from inside Renaissance Bank on Windward Parkway in beautiful Alpharetta. And folks, if you're wanting a bank that gives you the best of both worlds, doesn't treat you like the big banks do, where they've got automated phone phone numbers and voices and, you know, all that stuff, um, but they deliver personal service, but they're big enough to handle pretty much any need you can throw at them. If you want both of those things, you can have the best of both worlds at Renaissance Bank. And I know that personally because I and my clients experience that every day. So go to renaissancebank.com and find their local office. They've got some 200 across the South ready to serve you and give them a call. Give them a shot at it and uh, see what they can do for you. And I think you'll be glad you did. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now I want to welcome Chris Yaden and Tucker Penrod. And they are with the Unique Foundation. Chris, Tucker, welcome. John, it's good to be with you. Thanks, John, for having us. You came a long way, Chris. Yep. Tell everybody where you came from. So I'm based out of Utah. Um, awesome. We have a, a Western headquarters and an Eastern headquarters. Western is in Utah, just South Salt Lake, and Eastern's out here in Atlanta. I love it. Well, thanks for being here and coming in uh, to do the show with us today. But uh, let's get to the really important stuff and talk about the Unique Foundation, how you're serving out there. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So at the Unique Foundation, we work every day to liberate families, communities, and individuals from the impacts of sexual abuse. And that includes both prevention work as well as healing services to help survivors heal from sexual abuse. Wow. Talk about the kind of the history of the organization and uh, what led to its formation. Yeah. So we have an amazing founding story. Uh, It starts with a couple, Derek and Shalane Maxfield, and they, felt the need to help individuals who had been sexually abused as children. There weren't a lot of services available. There were services for people currently in crisis, for children in crisis. But for the child that was abused, 20 years later, they're dealing with post-traumatic stress. There really weren't many services for that individual. So they decided they wanted to start a foundation that specifically served that individual. But they needed additional funding. So uh, there's an amazing a business story here where they went out and actually started a business in order to fund the foundation. Wow. That that business was wildly successful. Uh, We were able to start the foundation in uh, 2015 and immediately start having impact. When you have the support and the funding as a nonprofit, you can focus on the services and that's what we were able, able to do. And that's, that's due to our founders and how they started our organization. Wow. Uh, there's a whole story there. We won't get into all of it, but, but, uh, I'm curious is, was, is the foundation the shareholder or or of the business or how did that work? Yeah, no, we're completely separate. There's, there's often corporate foundations that Mm -hmm. are part of the business. We're actually a 501c3 public charity. Mm -hmm. And, And while the, the business they started are huge supporters of ours, they, they still to this day donate 10% of their profits uh, we are independent organizations. We, we're run separately. We operate separately. We're governed by a board of directors, just like any public charity. And while they're an amazing founding partner of ours, we also rely on many other corporate partners and individuals to help us carry our work forward. Gotcha. So t- I want to talk about child sexual abuse first, uh, uh, because that leads obviously leads into the the day-to-day work you do with adult survivors of child sexual abuse. Talk about how prevalent child sexual abuse is. Yeah. So when we look at national statistics, one in five children will be sexually abused by age 18. Uh, It's a little higher for, for girls than it is for boys, but it's prevalent with both. And that's a myth that often is misunderstood. A lot of times people think it's primarily girls Mm -hmm. and though rates are higher with, with our girls, it certainly applies to, to boys as well. 
when we get a little bit more specific to here in Georgia, I'll just share a few quick Georgia specific stats for sure. you. So the CDC uh, does a measure every two years with our high school age students, and they ask three sexual violence questions. One of them is about rape. Another one's about sexual assault. So specifically here in Georgia, 14.2% of our girls and 6.8% of our boys report having been raped in their lifetime. Mm. And when we get to sexual assault, 15.1% of our girls and 7.7% of our boys report having been sexually assaulted in the last 12 months. Wow. So those rates are pretty consistent with national averages. The rape one's a little bit higher than national average, but the sexual assault one's pretty consistent. So when we, we talk about things here and here, here at home in Georgia, uh, it's, it's an issue that's very, very prevalent, very real. Uh, it doesn't know any boundaries. It's uh, the, the statistics don't vary a lot based on socioeconomic background, religious, non-religious, uh, race and ethnicity. It's consistent across the board. Uh, how does, how do these stats get compiled and, 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 uh, pulled because this is a, a crime, a horror that is, uh, often goes for years, uh, without surfacing for obvious reasons. Talk, talk about how that, how that happens, how those numbers are pulled. Yeah. The, the research methodologies vary quite a bit. Yeah. Um, some are pulled from actual records of what's reported to law enforcement or to, uh, state agencies. Uh, those incident rates are higher because a lot of people don't report. Um, the ones that report the highest prevalence are usually based on some sort of, uh, surveying of a population. For example, the CDC one I referenced. Uh, they're doing a survey across high school kids uh, all through the country, and they they parse it by state-specific stats as well as national stats. So a lot of self-report surveying, that's where we start to get a better sense of prevalence where people can confidentially report because if if it's not confidential, you get a lot of under-reporting. Sure, for sure. Um, folks, we're here uh, chatting with uh, Chris Yadon. Did I get that right? You got it. I, I, I'm on a roll today. Impressive. Yeah, thank you. And Tucker Penrod, they're with the Unique Foundation, doing great work with the Unique Foundation. Um, so let's talk about the adult survivors of child sexual abuse. I mean, what 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 are, I guess, some of the issues that you see? I mean, you mentioned – did you mention PTSD? And, I mean, talk about PTSD, what it is – and how it impacts these survivors. Yeah. So there are many, many results of abuse. Post-traumatic stress is often the most common diagnosis. And uh, a quick explanation of post-traumatic stress is an individual is in a heightened state of awareness when they're dealing with post-traumatic stress. And day-to-day things that, for those that don't deal with it, are normal and roll off your back don't roll off their back. They actually trigger their survival systems in their body and their brain and can drive them into high stress, uh, state of being panic attacks, anxieties, depressions. So the result of post-traumatic stress over time can be very devastating. I'll just share a few specific stats. So 85% of survivors of sexual abuse experience a diagnosed mental health disorder by age 30. And the reason for that is that that stress is being released so often and our bodies are not equipped to handle that much stress. So our body starts breaking down and Mm -hmm. often that results in mental health disorders. Suicide specifically, uh, female survivors of sexual abuse are three times more likely to attempt a suicide than someone that's not. Uh, substance abuse is another common one, eating disorders, uh, uh, teen pregnancy, uh, you have higher incident rates, high school dropouts, you have higher incident rates in a significant way. So a lot of these issues we deal with in our communities, in our society, are actually secondary issues to early childhood trauma, with sexual abuse being one of the big early childhood traumas that a lot of people experience. And and these are, and maybe this is what you're getting at, uh, Chris, but these are symptoms that, uh, of a 
bigger problem that has gone under the surface maybe for years and years. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes even the, the victim doesn't realize why they're experiencing the dysfunction in their lives that they're experiencing, right? Yeah, you got it. So uh, there's a couple of things going on here. Um, society has pushed sexual abuse under the rug. It's starting to surface. You've mm-hmm. seen things over the last five years in particular that it's it's starting to rear its head and society's starting to wake up going, something's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, leave the politics out of it. It's a good thing that it's surfacing. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's going to help us address the problem because until we acknowledge the problem, mm-hmm. we won't deal with the problem. Right. Uh, but then for the survivor themselves, there's a when something is stigmatized, it actually engenders shame. So that actually drives it under the surface as well. It's very common for a survivor of sexual abuse to not disclose their abuse, even to people that are very close to them, people that they love. We have women that come through our um, through our program that haven't even told their partner or sp- their spouse, mm. their husband. Uh, you think about the person that they're closest to, they haven't even told them. And that's not uncommon. Uh, so... It's, it's something that, as a society, if we can accept and make it safe to talk about, survivors are more, more likely to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm ready to deal with this, which will bring healing not just, just to them but to their family and, and, and their communities. It has a broad-based impact both in the positive when they heal and in the negative when they hide it and then when, it's, it, it, when they're shamed into hiding it. Chris Yadon folks, the executive director of the Unique Foundation here along with Tucker Penrod. Uh, so let's get into the specifics, Chris, in terms of the services that you offer uh, for uh, these individuals. Yeah. And, and is it all female right now or, or male or how does that break down? There, there's a mix. It depends on okay. the service. So, so we have six services and I'll just hit them really quick. Please. Uh, we have on the healing side, this is our healing services are focused on adult women. We have what we call it, call our Haven experience. It's a four day in-person experience. Uh, one here in, in Georgia and Dawson County, one back in the Western half of the U S just South of Salt Lake. And it's a four day in-person experience followed by nine weeks online. And that healing experience is designed to help the survivor understand what's happened to them understand how it's impacted them and give them key tools that they can use back at home to become self-sufficient in their healing. And uh, one thing that's amazing, we're, we're, we're recording right now. Mm -hmm. And as we are recording right now, our fifth 50th retreat experience is starting up Mm -hmm. in Dawson County, right as we speak. Wow. Uh, So super exciting. Um, In addition to that, we have finding hope support groups, which are, a survivor led survivor runs support groups that are community based. Anybody can start one. That's a survivor. Anybody can join one. Mm. Uh, third thing we have is our online resources. They're designed for survivors to use from the comfort of home. And that could be used by, by uh, females and males. Then on the prevention side, which we haven't really gotten into much yet, we have uh, resources for parents that help parents learn how to reduce the likelihood that their child will be abused or will abuse another and how to respond when their child is abused. Mm. We also have community-based education that think, uh, think uh, ecclesiastical leaders, school education, healthcare leaders can teach to their communities. And lastly, uh, we have awareness uh, services that, that work hard to raise awareness of the issue in our communities so those those are the ways we deliver uh, on our services. So let's get Tucker pulled in here now. Tucker's the local, I guess, boots on the ground, if you will, in here in Alpharetta. Why did you uh, maybe before we get to Tucker, Chris? Why did you start in Alpharetta? Why yeah. why why did you expand this way? And why did you send this guy over here? Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't send him over. He was already here. Oh, oh he was. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> he, awesome. He he has some, he has some connections back in Utah, but he's, I think he's Georgian at this point. He's been, awesome. here, a lo- he's been here a long time. <laughs> okay. So good. I've, I've been here uh, 25 years almost. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, cool. um, picking Georgia was really easy for mm-hmm. us. I'll, I'll just highlight a few of the reasons we wanted a Western headquarters and an Eastern. So we need to get over on the Eastern half of the U S mm-hmm. we needed a hub that was easy to get in, in and out of. Cause we have clients that come from all 50 States. 
We needed it to be an area where there was strong community support. And uh, it's it's amazing how similar the the culture of community is in Georgia and Utah. Mm. Strong sense of community, strong sense of support. Specific to Alpharetta, kind of a tech corridor along the Wasatch Front of Salt Lake City, tech corridor. Mm-hmm. Very similar culturally and was a good we we understood it we knew it there's differences don't get me wrong but there were there are more similarities than there are differences so the last thing that was super important to us was to uh, uh grow our outreach to to some of our minority communities mm. out west we have a lot of uh, uh latin communities we have a lot of uh, pacific islander community but in utah there aren't very large african american black American communities and mm-hmm. we wanted a stronger outreach uh, to those communities specifically and Georgia certainly uh, made that more made that possible and stronger for us. So Tucker why the Unique Foundation for you? I mean talk about what what uh, I guess motivated you to be involved with this fine cause. Yeah. Um so I've been connected with the Unique Foundation for a long time. Um, almost six months into the inception of the organization, I got mm-hmm. connected you know, with Chris and, and some other executives, and just really fell in love with the the mission, the passion, uh, the founders, um, what they were trying to do, what they stood for. Um, you know, I saw in them that they wanted to help people become better. Um, you know, specifically in from a standpoint of child sexual abuse, but really wanting to help people reach their fullest potential. Mm. And and that is what really grasped me um, when I first met them. And, and obviously as we talked to them, so we're, you know, have the the Western headquarters in in Utah and just um, opened our, our Eastern headquarters in in Atlanta in 2019. So we, we've only been in the Atlanta market for about two years. Um, And so early on there was, there's really no employment opportunity for, for myself to, to join the unique foundation. Um, and so I was just, you know, an advocate and supporter and, and, you know, consumed the the materials and started to use the materials that they provided, you know, to parents and caregivers to, in my own family, mm. uh, to help my kids. Um, and so began really passionate about helping my kids. I'm the father of five and I want to help my children be protected from this. Um, and then in, in 2019, when they announced that they were coming to Alpharetta, uh, I was like, oh, well, I just live uh, a few miles from there. Maybe there's a good opportunity to join the team. And and uh, fortunately for, for me, I was able to to get hired on and join the team and, and just really love, again, the, the mission and the passion uh, behind it all and, and really just changing lives um, for the better. Um, in many different ways and in, in many different opportunities, uh, of course, the, you know, being advocates of, um, prevention of child sexual abuse and then healing, uh, from that is just amazing. And, and I see the change, uh, in, in people's lives mm-hmm. as they, you know, come to retreat and, and get the healing resources. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I first joined the organization, I had a lot of people message me. Um, saying that, that they were a survivor. Um, wow. and it was just, just, a, a a trust factor. They, they trusted me, uh, to be able to help them, uh, mm-hmm. and be able to disclose that information. And so it opened my eyes really to how we can be advocates for good. Um, not only, you know, if you work for the foundation or not, but just in our communities in general and, and creating that social awareness is, is just so huge. So. Now, what is your role here uh, on on this side of the country, the <laughs> Eastern headquarters? So, what, what's your day to day role? Yes, I'm the um, outreach fundraising coordinator. Uh, essentially, I'm I, I work with our outreach team to connect with local businesses and community leaders um, to be able to one create awareness and education of what we are doing and who we are, um, and then obviously the, the the relevance of of the problem. Uh, and then really connecting people with the resources and then and then helping them find a way to help in our fundraising efforts. Um, you know, as a nonprofit, uh, we need the the funding just like every nonprofit out there. And so that's my role is to connect businesses uh, with opportunities to be able to find ways to fundraise. That could look like a 
you know, a, a paint and sip night that we actually just ho- hosted here uh, locally um, or a, a, a roundup at, at checkout. So just mm. finding different ways uh, to be able to connect uh, the businesses and the communities uh, with giving back. Yeah, a lot, definitely want to get back to that uh, and how business can uh, can help. Um, one thing I want to make sure I asked, though, uh, Chris, was uh, preventative services. Uh, what what kind of work do you do in that regard? Yeah, it's really important to understand when it, when it comes to prevention. There's there's a lot of things going on in our community. Sure, but none of them matter if mom and dad or that primary caregiver is not involved. So we'll never move the needle on prevention if we can't get mom and dad engaged. So we do our prevention work through a secondary brand called Defend Innocence. And what we do is built into that name where it's it's all about defending the innocence of children. And the best ones to defend the innocence of the children are those that are providing that primary care. So we work hard at, in our prevention efforts to engage with mom and dad specifically, help mom and dad learn how to reduce the risk of their children being abused, how to reduce the risk that their child will abuse another, and how to respond if something does does seem off or, 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 or go the wrong direction. Mm. And that's that's the crux of prevention. When when mom and dad are engaged, all the other other things that are going on in the community whether it's legislation or a community program or an after school program or what's going on at the elementary school, those all start to have a positive effect. But without mom and dad in the gate engaged, those other things will never move the needle. So we focus on mom and dad. We let other organizations focus on the other community pieces and we're all about getting mom and dad engaged in day-to-day prevention. Chris, you on folks. He's the executive director of the Unique Foundation, along with uh, Tucker Penrod. Tucker's here in uh, the Alpharetta area, um, uh, planting the flag here in Alpharetta for the Unique Foundation. So um, let's let's talk about business involvement uh, with your organization. Uh, Tucker, you mentioned the the fundraiser. That sounds like a lot of fun. The the what what was it, it the, the paint the paint and sip, sip night? paint yeah. and sip so, yeah uh, that sounds like a lot of fun yeah we had a, a local business um a, a wine business that mm-hmm. that wanted to support and and I knew a an artist and they had actually done this before together um and so we we crafted a, a fundraising event to where uh, a portion of the proceeds of that ticket sale went towards the unique foundation. Um, and it was just an amazing experience to be able to get that business involved and then the community around them involved. So we got people that, that love to, you know, come and, and, and sip on wine and, and paint and have a good time and, and chat with their, with their friends and, and people that they're around. Um, and then be able to just help educate again, who we are and what we're doing and and the resources. I think that that's a, a big factor in this is the community education and the awareness um, and helping people get to those resources. So it just pre- created a, a multitude of opportunities for all of that for from awareness to fundraising. And so uh, it was an awesome event. And so those are the, the type of events that we, we love to do. Um, and, and it's very customizable between businesses. Um, you know, not every business is a, is a wine uh, distributor. Sure. Um, and so, you know, really my role is to build those relationships with the, the business leaders uh, and come up with a way to to help fundraise and and what that may look like. It, it could be an internal, um, you know, a peer-to-peer fundraiser um, it, for their employees to say, hey, we as an organization, um, we're passionate about this cause. We want, we, we really love this organization. Here's what we want to do. We, we want to set a goal of X um, and get their employees involved to be able to reach that goal. Um, and so again, there's, there's lots of different ways to be able to do that. Um, it could be even just a, a, a roundup at, at checkout, mm. um, you know, for the, our retail business owners, um, you know, it, again, it gets the community involved, um, and it gets their customers involved. Um, and so we've seen a lot of good success in that as well. And if, given, oh, I just, 
I was going to say, yeah, if please. I may, John. Yeah, please. Um, I think the key to what what Tucker's outlining there is mission alignment. You, you heard it in his stories. We'll meet businesses where they're at. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's engaging their employees. Sometimes it's engaging their customer. Sometimes it has to do with their product, like the wine. Um, sometimes it's a tele, telecom company that's holding a conference and they want to have a positive experience at the conference. We'll meet businesses where they're at. It's about aligning aligning our mission with their mission and doing good. And given the numbers that you talked about, Chris, it's highly likely, whether you know it or not, that you have uh, uh, an employee or more uh, and customers that have been victims of child sexual abuse. And so you're hitting them right where they what, right where they live and right what what they experience every day. Yeah, can I share just a brief story Please. about that? Yeah, absolutely. A, a personal story. Yeah. So, um when I first started in this work, I had a very experience similar experience to Tucker where I had pe- people reach out to me immediately. Mm-hmm. And and I had no idea how close it was to me mm. until I started working here. Mm. This is back to that stigma mm-hmm. and and the point you're making that you have employees you probably have family. Mm-hmm. I had I had several family members. These are the people I'm closest to. Mm. We have great relationships. Mm-hmm. I had several family members disclose for the first time. Wow. And I'd known them some all my life in mm-hmm. the case of my immediate family. Mm-hmm. And in the case of uh, 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 extended family, some that I'd known for many, many years. Wow. I had neighbors that I had close relationships with disclose for the first time. And uh, so – that that's the reality. The point you made that you just latched onto is right on. It's it's around us even if we're we don't know exactly who or where, and that includes our employees. Yeah, and to that point again, uh, we we did a um, during uh, April is is Child Sexual Abuse Awareness Month. Yeah, and, or Child Abuse Prevention Month and and Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had a business uh, join in that effort to help in our fundraising efforts, um, local business owner, um, that was, you know, doing mortgages, um, and wanted to, you know, reach out to their loan officers and say, Hey, we want to set a goal. Um, and in kind of interviewing him and discussing him with him, you know, why they did this and, and the impacts that it was having in their business. And he really pointed out that, you know, it's not only again, affecting maybe potential employees, uh, under his organization, but um, if they can help get resources internally to those folks that, that need them, you're not only helping change that individual's life, but you're also affecting the lives around them. Mm. So their families, mm-hmm. their friends, their communities. Um, is, so it's not just about affecting and, and helping heal that one um, because in turn you're, you're helping heal and support others around them. Uh, because now that person is a better employee, they're a better mother or, um, you know, spouse, friend, sister, you know, what have you, that it just makes the whole community better. And so that was one thing that I loved, um, in talking with him is that he really saw that, Mm -hmm. that it, it wasn't just about, you know, helping, you know, potential employees. Um, but he saw the greater, the greater overall, um, cause to better the community. So uh, as we wind things down here, uh, Chris Tucker, I I would love it. And uh, you're obviously in a business of confidentiality, but uh, you know, without sharing names, I would just love it. If you maybe could share a success story. I mean, then let's give folks maybe the human, a a little bit of a human face as to the, the kind of individual they're supporting when they support the unique foundation. Maybe you can talk about a, a success story. Yeah. I'd love to share uh, the story of a woman named fire. She came to one of our very first retreats mm. uh, back in 2015. And at the time was dealing with that post-traumatic stress that we talked about. Mm-hmm. And uh, about a year in after she had started engaging with our services and started working through her her own healing, uh, she started to see some life changes. And um, we caught up with her again a month and a half ago. Mm. Let me tell you what's happened since then. She has uh, She's reconnected with her faith. 
She has um, graduated from school and become a nurse. Mm. She's gotten married, and she she's uh, about to have a, her first baby. Wow. When we talk about impacting individuals and what Tucker just talked about, about it having an impact on others, mm-hmm. uh, it's impacted not just her, but it's now impacting society. Her, her exact words, had I not gone through that retreat experience, I would not be able to give the care that I do as a nurse. Mm. So you think about how important nurses are right now. Right. They're always important, but you think about what we're dealing with right now. There's one more because she was able to deal with that post-traumatic stress and because there was a donor kind enough and compassionate enough to make it possible and because there were staff and supporters that were willing to teach her what she needed to learn. But but at the end of the day, she owned her healing, and that's what it's about. We're here to empower the survivor to own their own healing, to be a steward of their own healing, and fire is a great example of that. Uh, I, I wish I could share more of her story, but it would take, yeah. take, take a little long. Right. But she's she's an amazing example of what we get to see every day. And just to put two quick stats behind fire, we've had uh, almost 4,000 women come through our um, experience, either here in Georgia or, or in Utah. And on average, they experience a 37% reduction in post-traumatic stress and a 45% increase in well-being indicators. Mm. That's what enables a fire to go to school, to become a nurse, to be able to get married, have a healthy relationship, to be able to bring a baby into this world. Wow. That's those those numbers when you put the the individual and the name behind it and see what's happened, you see you see how life-changing it is. Wow. Uh well, at that there's no other question to ask other than how people can get involved and get in touch at this point. So let's give them those coordinates, Chris. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just give you a few, uh, a couple of websites, unique foundation.org spelled Y O U N I Q U E foundation.org. That's where our healing services are. Defend innocence.org. That's where you want to go for prevention. And uh, of course here locally, uh, you can reach out to Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, pull him in here. Yeah, Tucker, you want to just <laughs> Come share, on, share your email? Let them yeah. flood your inbox. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to, to reach out to me. You can reach out to me via email. Uh, it's T, as in Tom, Penrod, P-E-N-R-O-D, at uniquefoundation.org. And, again, that's Y-O-U-N-I-Q-U-E, foundation.org. And something tells me, Tucker, that even though you're here in Alpharetta and we're North Fulton Business Radio, if – in the metro atlanta area if you want to get involved you're able to get involved yeah that's right i mean we're we're ready and willing to be able to partner with with those that that want to uh, no matter if they're you know in in north fulton or the atlanta community or or actually where where they're based in in the country or the world so we'd love to partner that's awesome that's awesome chris yadon yadon and tucker penrod easy for me to say the unique foundation guys Thanks for the terrific work you do. We're we're honored to have you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Sean. Thanks to both of you. Folks, just a quick reminder that if you've got administrative tasks and uh, in your business, you've got bookkeeping issues that are uh, pulling you down, you're spending more time on them than you are on the important things, which is servicing clients, uh, you got a problem. <laughs> you've got a problem that needs to be solved, and I've got a solution that involves – Getting in touch with SES Cabido. She's got a whole team of angels, yes, office angels. And what they do is uh, they fly in, get the job done, and fly out. And they do it on an ongoing or as needed basis. So here's my suggestion you can go to the website, officeangels.us, and check them out. That That's the shy approach. My suggestion is give her a call, 770 442 9246. Tell her I sent you. Explain the problem uh, to Essie, and she'll be glad to help you. And uh, she'll call in a, a great angel that will fly in and get the work done for you. You'll be glad you did, and I know you will because I use her services. So uh, there you go. And, folks, just a quick reminder, you can find our show, North Fulton Business Radio, on all the major podcast apps we would love it if you would uh, if you've got the capability on your app to give us a great review to do so um some apps have it some don't 
but uh, if they do, give us a five-star review. I'm boldly asking for that because it's not about me or Business Radio X. It's about our great guests like Chris and Tucker that do great work, and we want them to be found. So if you could help us in that regard, we would appreciate it. So for our uh, guest today, Chris Yadon and Tucker Penrod with the Unique Foundation, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.